three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest uh, for a bunch of different reasons. But before we talk to today's guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and most importantly, that automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Our guest is looking at me like, is this guy going to walk on the treadmill desk the entire time? It's a little distracting, but that's I mean, okay. You do you, whatever, whatever you got to do. All right. I, I think it's cool. I'm jealous, but go ahead. All right. Well, let's talk to Grant Wise. Grant Wise is a serial entrepreneur and founder of Real Estate Marketing University, an online media training company. Grant is known to be a maverick leader and an innovative marketing strategist, unafraid to lead companies in new directions. Grant's story is one of education, truth, and perseverance. He's helped more than a thousand companies, entrepreneurs, and business owners actualize their dreams through hands-on learning. Grant has been described as irreverent, artful, and dramatic with a strong entrepreneurial spirit, constantly striving for results in his clients' businesses. Grant Wise, welcome to our Passive Income Podcast. How are you? I'm good, Mark, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. So let's, uh, let's just rewind the tape. And uh, kind of tell us your origin story. How did you get into real estate? 100%. So, uh, again, thanks for having me. I appreciate it so much. Uh, love the opportunity to come share value with your, your group. Um, yeah, I got my start back, back uh, at the ripe old age of 19. Um, I, uh, wow. I was a college dropout. I went to college play a little baseball and uh, ended up with elbow surgeries two and three. That was coming off of, of my first facial reconstruction from taking a fastball to the chin. So I, uh, I kind of decided that baseball had taken a little bit more for me than I was ever going to get back. And so I, uh, you know, I grew up in real estate development. My um, step-grandfather, he developed one of the only high rises, actually one of three, now three high rises that we've got in town. Uh, was working on a condo project out at the lake that uh, was very Lake of the Ozarks-esque that, that he had to fight to, to get approved. Um, everybody in my family, I think, held a real estate license in some capacity. My grandfather helped develop what's now known as uh, Bella Vista, Arkansas, which is a huge community that's blossomed in the area. So I come from a long line of people in that space. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, basically what happened is I was – 18 going on 19 and um, come back home from my first semester at, uh, at college. And, you know, obviously I had a, a little bit of an issue with um, the school part of it. I was, I was all game for the baseball part of it, but the school part of it just, it wasn't really suiting. And um, so I come home, I say, Hey, look, you know, I, uh, I have zero interest in this whole uh, school thing. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try and figure something else out. And my parents said, you know, Hey, if you don't go to school and get your education, you, you're, you're basically going to be a loser and uh, nobody's going to want anything to do with you. And you're, you're never going to get anything figured out in life. And this is all coming from a few parents that had never gone to college and didn't have any degrees. <laughs> um, but you know, that's neither here nor there. So I, uh, I agreed. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do another year of school. I did a, another half a semester and uh, I failed history for the second consecutive semester in a row. And I was like, look, I have zero business being in this place. I am not the, the book guy. Um, so, you know, I'm done. And around that time, my father, he had fallen off of a ladder on a little construction project, hurt himself really bad. And so I stepped in and said, hey man, look, I'll do all the work. You, you just get paid. You know, you do, you do, let's do the 50, 50 thing. I'll do all the work. You get paid. And uh, he was like, all right, fine, let's do that. And, um, I sent him like my second check and I was like, I don't think I want to do that anymore. I'm giving you way too much of this money. Uh, I'm doing all the work and, uh, you know, that, uh, that is what it is. And so made him an offer, bought his business. And, um, it was, uh, man, it was, it was a pretty interesting ride from there forward. I went on that next year and, uh, I did like $56,000 in sales, right? I played golf five days a week and I did a construction project on the weekend. And uh, it was a pretty simple life. 
But around the time golf season ended, I started to get that taste for something more. And I developed some great relationships in the roofing space. And uh, I said, you know what, I'm going to start a roofing company alongside of this gutter business. And about three months later, we got this massive hailstorm. It was awesome for me. It wasn't awesome for everybody else. But uh, we, uh, you know, basically spent a ton of concentrated time doing insurance work in, uh, in our area, in other storm areas, and did really well. You know, I went from $56,000 in sales to $826,000 in sales within about 10 or 11 months. Profited, I think I had like 180 Gs in my pocket. The only problem with that is... I didn't grow up with any education on how to use that money. So my dad, somewhat of an alcoholic, I love to get to death, but it is what it is. My mom uh, had her addictions. She slept most of my life. Love her for who she is, but it is what it is. And all I really saw was my dad drink, buy toys, saw my mom sleep. You know, it was, uh, it just wasn't the best situation. And, when I got a ton of money in my pocket after growing up my entire life in a garage, sleeping on a couch, I did what I saw my parents do. I drank a ton and made a ton of financial errors. Um, the way I managed my money from over buying uh, equipment to buying too many trucks to doing this and to doing that had outrageous bar tab after outrageous bar tab and just was headed down a path of pure destruction. And so the next year, I start to, you know, enter into it and, and I kind of realized that I'm not making enough money to support my bad habits. So I got to figure out ways to make more money. And uh, I started like four or five more businesses, which obviously is, is very silly, but I thought, Hey, what the heck? I'm really good at starting these companies. Let's, let's just do, let's just do this as many times as we can. And um, I had like six businesses uh, owned a lawn care company, this, that, and the other. And, you know, basically long story short, we did like 1.2 million that next year. And I lost money because I had too much payroll. I had too many bar tabs. I had too much equipment. I had too much everything. And somebody came to me, my step grandfather actually came to me and he said, Hey, we're going to start a real estate company and we're going to pay our real estate agents hundred percent commission. And I'm like, all right, sweet. I'm really good at certain companies. Let's do this. This whole construction thing's not working out. And uh, so I, I somewhat left my attention, you know, on my construction companies and focused almost exclusively on this real estate business for a couple of years. And the only problem was that, you know, the real estate company was growing. My construction businesses were going down. What, and what, what niche you were you in, in real estate? Were you in housing, multifamily? We were, we were, yeah, we were in residential. So we were, we were basically working with uh, residential real estate agents, paying them hundred percent commission on the deals that they did. And um, you know, Long story short, real estate companies started, you know, growing and scaling up. Uh, construction companies kept going down and taking me with it. And it was August 13th, 2014. I'll never forget the day. Uh, the guys that we had brought, I brought in to help fund the real estate business basically came to me and they said, hey, we think you're the reason this company is not growing and we want you to leave. And uh, it's just total shock. I, I guess if you look back at the, the, the stuff, it wasn't shock looking at it from their side of the table, but here I am, I'm 23 ish. I'm bankrupt. And I just got kicked out of a company that I dedicated two years of my blood, sweat and tears to. And so I, I had a choice, like I could fight it or I could figure out something different, like on my own. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm, I'm the youngest person in this company by three times my age. Nobody knows that, you know, what I'm saying is real. Nobody's implementing it. Nobody's taking any action on anything that I'm trying to teach these real estate agents to do. Everybody thinks I'm a loser. Everybody thinks I'm this, everybody thinks I'm that I'm just, I'm done. Like I'm going to back out of it. And so I took the week, freaked the hell out. And, uh, then, you know, kind of came back and said, you know what, I'm going to teach these real estate agents what I've been trying to teach them all along. When you say freak the hell out, like, what does that mean? Like, did you go on like a silent meditation or I went like, go, go like into a, like the jungle or I, take peyote? No, I was broke. I didn't have any money to go anywhere. I just, I just had oh, to okay. sit in a room and like think about what the hell I had done to get myself into this situation. And my, uh, my now wife, you know, she was very, very helpful through this like period of my life. And, uh, you know, she worked a ton at the time because I was working a ton, but not making any money, you know, whatever. So I sat back and said, hey, I'm going to teach real estate agents what I've been trying to teach them. I'm going to teach them how to use social media to grow their businesses. And so I, I just started learning like a ton. 
I had a couple people grab me at key points, shook me up one side and down the other and, and really helped me realize some of the error in my ways. And I launched this new company uh, with my social media bootcamp program that was only, it was a four week course that only had one week done. Um, but you know, I took everything I had, I, I had $25 to my name and I put it in Facebook ads, which I knew would produce fruit if I had a good offer. And within a week I made a thousand bucks and I learned so much just almost instantly. And, you know, obviously one of which one lesson was that I could acquire customers for 25 bucks. That was pretty huge. Wish I could still do that. And uh, the, uh, the other was that, you know, through all of that BS, through all of that turmoil, through all that stuff, I still had value and people would still pay for it. Like I, people, I just had to, I think Eric Thomas said it best. You got to go where you're appreciated, not where you're tolerated. And I went where I was appreciated and that $25 I had turned into a now $10 million company. And I, I just spent all of my time teaching real estate agents how to use Facebook ads. And that was it. I never, I was never interested in the transactional process uh, on a, for, as a real estate agent. I was always interested in the business and marketing side, which is the, some of the benefits that I added when I owned that agency. And uh, I just stuck to it, man. My first client did 18 deals in 90 days. That first person that paid me $1,000 did 18 real estate transactions in 90 days, all from one Facebook ad. And she went on to pocket like $150,000 her first year in business and her first year with me. And just agent after agent after agent that I began to work with started to get those results. So I, you know, I built back up to a six figure company really fast. And in 2015, December, 2015, I launched what's now known as modern agent mastery, which was a full scale course that taught real estate agents how to use Facebook ads. So I, I took all of what I had learned, packaged it up into a really, really impactful course and launched. And, you know, we, we went from a six figure business to a seven figure business to a multiple seven figure business really, really quick. And, uh, you know, now we're on pace to do, you know, multiple, uh, tens of millions, which is awesome. But, how I got in the investing space is, you know, about eight months ago, I just kept getting pestered. Like I, I, I became such a huge proponent of focus, which I think everybody should, right? Starting multiple companies is not a good idea. I just, I got so zeroed in and so dialed in on what it was that I wanted to do and what it was I wanted to be known for. But I had investor after investor, you know, watch these agents that we're doing business with start, you know, every $21 they spend, they're doing a deal. Um, just came to me as like, nobody can figure out this Facebook thing in the investing space. And, you know, we, we're, we're spending, we're getting killed with the junk mail, the yellow letters. We're getting killed with everything that we're doing because we're having to spend crazy high numbers. Obviously it makes sense because we're still doing it, but it's just getting so high. And I eventually got to a place where I had the freedom to start allocating some of my attention in other places. And I said, you know what, I think this is like the best next vertical for, for me to enter into was real estate investing. And so we started running Facebook ads. So we started testing and after about three to four months spending a ton of our own money and, and testing and tweaking, we started churning out uh, seller leads for eight to $12 a lead. And now uh, after launching that program and, and helping, we've, we help, we've got investors that are doing deals and the, the numbers are just stupid. Like, uh, that, like it just is, we just had an investor do a deal, $124 in Facebook ads got him a deal, ended up with just a little over $23,000 in profit. I've never, you know, invested in a deal my entire life. I've always just kind of stayed in, you know, my lane. I'm really starting to get into an investing space now because I'm looking for places to put money. And uh, I wholesaled a deal for less than $100 in Facebook ads just to prove our theories. And uh, we had another client did a deal. Uh, it was really funny. He did a deal for 20 bucks that is going to produce, you know, around four or $500 in monthly cash flow for however long he wants to hold on to this property. And we, you know, we've got just person after person is just listening and taking action. We got a guy like Bob in St. Louis, you know, we, we were able to add over $3 million in revenue to his business in 2000, I think 17, 16, 17. And, uh, and I'm just enjoying the heck out of it, man. So that's, that's kind of my backstory. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's a lot of hard, like hard knocks lessons that, you know, just kept getting cracked in the teeth and, and decided not to give up and resulted in an opportunity to be able to teach and educate real estate agents, real estate investors all over the world, how to really bring their business social in a way that is super scalable and is super profitable and is really fun. Scott Todd, I can, I can see the, the wheels spinning you got a lot of questions for, for Grant. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, like, okay, so, so Grant, you know, like, 
uh, you know, like what, what is the, the cost to acquire a customer today? Like a fair amount, you know, like on Facebook and I know it, I know it's going to range by, by, um, you know, by the person you're trying to attract, but 100%. okay. Like, you know, I, I'm a real estate investor. I want to attract a customer. How much do I need to be prepared to pay for that one customer? Because I don't think a lot of people think that way. I think a lot of people they think look C- at it. They think, they, they think all day long. how much do I got to pay for a lead? How much do I got to pay for a lead? And they're not looking right. at the metrics like they should be. So to answer your question in short, we've seen people acquire deals for 20 bucks and the highest I've seen so far is around 1200 in Facebook ads. So I think that to truly answer your question, if you, if you're a real estate investor out there and you're saying like, I want to do a deal, you've got to reverse engineer how many deals you're trying to do. Like if you're, if you're trying to do a deal and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to net $20,000 on the project, like, well, hell you should be willing to pay at least 4,000 bucks to acquire a customer. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day. So you've got to kind of reverse engineer some of those things and, and the way that they look for your business, what we've seen and we're starting to see a very consistent pattern is that we can get deals under two to 300 bucks a deal. Uh, and that's huge, huge. But on that token, we have seen deals go as high as a thousand to twelve hundred bucks a deal, and I think that it is solely predicated on your ability to create relationships with online leads. That's the biggest significant difference that I've seen between the investors that do no deals, investors that do some deals, and investors that do a ton of deals. Is your ability to curate relationships out of thin air, and that's something that we've become incredibly obsessed with over the last like three to four months, especially watching our real estate agents and our investors is like, how do you win a friend in 20 minutes that results in a commission check results in a deal. And you know, we've, we've kind of become obsessed with some of those trainings, but. All right. So how, how do I win a customer in 20 minutes? I think it's like, stop looking at the numbers so much. Like obviously it's a numbers game. We all know it's a numbers game. You got to look at the math and it has to make sense or, or you're not going to win. But if you look like at a motivated seller, what do these people have to go through to need a real estate investor? They divorce, job loss, bankruptcy, parent loss, real life shit. Sorry for cussing, but like real life stuff. And you have all these investors that I'm talking to. I got on the phone with an investor out of Boston uh, about six weeks ago. I got on the phone with ISA because they're not closing any deals. And I'm like, what is going on? How much time are you actually trying to spend on the phone with this person to get an appointment? Five minutes max. Well, I think I found your problem there, <laughs> Tom. I, I don't think that your people are actually trying to create a relationship. It's just a volume game. And salespeople, you know, acquisition managers get accustomed to new opportunity every day. So they don't work as hard for it because they think I'll just get the next one. And if most people, like all people realize that if you just stopped and tried to create a relationship with this person, cared about their problems, cared about what they've got going on, spent 20 or 30 minutes, not trying to get an appointment, but trying to get to know them, your deal flow would increase through the roof and your, your need to generate as many leads would decrease like crazy. So think back to that party you were at, that you, you connected with this, this person over what, what was that? You know, that you looked up and two to three hours later, you're like, holy crap, I can't believe I've been here two hours talking to you. What was it when you met your wife that entranced you into sitting there for two to three hours and making sure that that relationship went somewhere? What types of conversation, what types of interaction? If you want to win a friend in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, do that. Be interested, be caring, be compassionate, be engaged and attempt to create a relationship before you ever try to attempt to get a deal and you'll see your conversion rates in, just blow up. And you'll see your marketing market. overhead shrink like crazy because you don't need to de- generate as many leads to do as many deals as you want to. You know, Mark, at, at a boot camp that we recently had, you know, pe- people were, were um, I think people struggle with sales, right? And I think that right. what Grant said is so important, right? It's not, it's not about like hammering them, like, give me your credit card, give me your credit card, give it to me now. It's more about that relationship, right? Like, it, it, we've heard we've heard the Wes Schaefer, the the sales whisperer, talk about you know the doctor. The doctor walks in, he solves a problem, you know, and it's the same thing. How how can you just attack someone for their credit card and, and expect to get it unless you have that relationship first before they know, like, and trust you? Yeah, I mean, going back to that doctor analogy, the doctor doesn't just sit down and just start saying, you know, 
hey, uh, you know, I went to this medical school and, uh, you know, we're just going to go ahead and, and fix you. Like they, they really get to know you first so that you feel a bond with that doctor. And then they start asking you those questions and then they diagnose it and, and try to help you. And, and um, you know, I, I think, you know, Grant's got that sort of magic formula that, you know, on the surface, everyone sort of intuitively knows like, oh, it's so simple, right? But no one wants to do it because it is hard work. Active listening is hard work. Stepping out of your own thoughts and really sort of stepping into someone else's shoes and pain of being in a divorce or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, going into bankruptcy or some type of, you know, hardship to be able to sit with someone and, and be uncomfortable with that pain is hard. And yet when, if you can do it, you almost differentiate yourself from 99% of the people out there. And it's just like what Grant said, your, your deal flow is going to go way up because that person is going to only want to work with you. Yeah. Grant, um, you said something back a second ago. You said, I've kind of got a magic formula and I just want to make it clear. Like my magic formula is work. Like that's, that's the, that's the, that's the silver bullet. That's the overnight success key. Like that's, that's a hundred percent what will get you to where you want to go. It's, it's just work. Like don't be romantic about it and stop trying to find the next Bitcoin so you can, you know, triple your revs day in and day out. Like just freaking work and work on one thing to one audience. Like, and, and you will be, unbelievably amazed at what happens to your business. What, what is some of the worst advice you see given in your area of expertise of let's say lead generation or Facebook marketing? I think that there is a ton of good advice that's given. I just don't think that the timelines are accurate. Like in, in the reality of the situation, like in residential real estate, it's a three month business. It's, it's cyclical. It, it, the deal that you do today, the lead that you generate today, if they are ready, which one to 3% are, one to 3% of your total lead flow will do business with you today. And 20 to 40% of those people are gonna do business with somebody else tomorrow, right? But if you, if you look at it, you've got these brokers, you got these investor coaches, you got everybody out there screaming about this perceptive lifestyle they can live with the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis and this and that and the other, but then nobody talks about the time that it takes. Like, oh, just do this, do this, do this, and it'll work. Yes, it will work in six to eight months. <laughs> yes, it will work in one to three months. But I think this whole nuance that you can just take a course and become rich is absolute bullshit. And I think that if, if you would take a step back and have a real conversation with somebody and just say, look, this is going to work like freaking crazy, like the best thing that you've ever done in your entire life, but you're not going to see a single result for at least three months. I, I just think it's such a better conversation. So I think by, by telling people like the, we're talking about these magic bullets that you can do this, do this, do this, and you're just going to win. You're doing somebody such a disservice by stealing their time from them because they're going to do it and they're going to stop in two weeks. They're going to do it and they're going to stop in a month and they're going to move on to the next thing. And you basically, you've got these gurus that are robbing people of their time and just simply by not setting the right expectation because they need to drive sales. And I think it's bullshit. So, so Grant, before we get to tips of the week, I got one more question for you because I saw this on your podcast. Yes. It says how the real estate industry is destroying itself. What's all that about? I think that 94% of the real estate industry and I, I, you know, take offense if you will, are shit bags. And I think that everybody's so interested in the money, the car, the, the house, the this, the that. They're so interested in living based on what other people think that it's driving a lot of their decisions, which is not with the end user in mind. So you're thinking, I need a commission check. 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 I need, I need to live deal to deal to deal. I need to do a deal so I can go rent a Benz that I can't make the third payment on <clears throat> so that somebody will like me. And I, I, if you look at it, you've got no care, you've got no compassion, you've got no authenticity. You just got a bunch of assholes walking around treating each other like literal crap. Like you see no communication. You just see, you just see error after error after error after error, which reinforces <clears throat> these software companies, these tech companies, these Zillow giants, these Amazon people, these Facebooks, right? it reinforces their desire to go build a product that replaces the real estate industry. 
Now, a lot of that conversation is directed towards residential real retail agents because I think they're in huge trouble. I, I really think they're in big trouble because of just how much they don't care. And it's so evident. You know, you got people saying, oh, software companies will never re replace real estate agents. Bullshit. Software companies will never replace relationships. Fact, right? Because when Walmart came out, there were mom and pops that didn't go out of business. When Amazon came out, <clears throat> there were mom and pops that didn't go out of business, right? When Airbnb came out, there were massive hotel chains that were fine. When Uber came out, there were car service companies that were fine, right? <clears throat> Why? Because of the relationships they developed, because of the media that they had aggregated, because of the tribe that they had built under their businesses. And that's like the core concept of everything that we teach. If, it, if, if Instagram helped you build media and grow your, 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 your real estate empire, I would teach you Instagram. But right now, Facebook is the best platform I've seen to help you build media, 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 which will help you build any business that you could ever want to build. I love it. I love it. You're, you're uh, preaching to the choir here. So we're at that point now in the podcast where we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Grant Wise, what do you have? I think the best thing that you could possibly do, if you're trying to figure out this Facebook thing, which I think is so important right now because the investment community does not even close to have this figured out, is go to investing.thebestads.com and I literally give you all all of our best secrets for free. I'm going to teach you strategically how to generate leads through Facebook ads, 100% free. Just go to investing.thebestads.com. I'm going to teach you the strategies. I'm going to show you how to get names, email addresses, phone numbers, build media so you can do more deals. Investing.thebestads.com. All right, very cool. Learn how to generate motivated sellers through Facebook ads for your real estate investing business. I'm signing up right now. Wait, what is it, Mark? Investing dot the best ads. Oh, the. All right, I missed the. All right, yeah. the best ads dot com. All right, Scott Todd, do hey, you have Mark, a tip of the week? Yeah, you didn't sign up, did you? I did. Ah, uh, you beat me to it. Okay, dang. Of course. I missed that the. Come on. Hey, I'm Mark. Quick like all that. right. Yeah, I know. Hey, listen, here's, here's uh, my tip. You know, I, so, sometimes we create these videos uh, for properties, whatever, and, you know, finding music can kind of be a pain. And sometimes you just got to pay for the music. But check out this, uh, check out this website. And I'll put it in the chat, but I'll also tell everybody so they can go see it too. It's, it's audionautics.com. So it's A U D I O. N A U T I X audionautics.com. And again, I'm throwing it in the chat. For That's got to be the worst URL it's, ever. I, like, I, no I, one's going to be able to spell this thing. That's right. I, and I, but All I didn't right. name it. I'm just, I'm just don't, don't kill the messenger, right? Right. It's free music for your videos, YouTube, whatever. It's free. Very How can cool. You complain? I'm not so complaining. The name is terrible. I agree the name is terrible, but it's free. I love it. You know, Audio so someone, I hope whoever like runs this website, like that they're actually listing and then they're like, Oh, sorry, let me change it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, my tip of the week is if you want to learn how to become internet famous, the value of video, are you sub sabotaging your conversion rates? Uh, how, how to generate sellers in no inventory markets the science behind targeting your ideal client. It's a relationship business. Are you tracking yours? Motivation means nothing without. Go to likegrantwise.com, likegrantwise.com, and get the answers to all those burning questions. And uh, I have a feeling that Grant's onto something here, especially uh, with the depth of just work hard and you know focus on the relationship and the results are going to happen on their own. Uh, you know, just avoid that timeline. So, Grant, are we good? Hey, if you say we are, my man, I think, I think we're great. I appreciate you guys having me out here and uh, giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit. All right, Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right, I want to remind the listeners, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it process of getting paid 
get your down payment. Then we automate the monthly payments via ACH. If the ACH fails, it'll charge the credit card on file. You are assured of getting paid. It has journal entries. It does all the fun calculations to make your bookkeeper smile. Get your first note free at thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay, but learn more at geekpay.io. Um, I also want to remind everybody the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a like Grant Wise.com, Grant Wise, is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. All right, Scott, are we going to do this? Let's do it, Mark. One, two, One, three. Two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody.